I'm Pastor Chris Bivens, and sometimes I just don't feel fed after the worship service. I want to thank you for uh, joining me on another episode of the Hammer of God, a show that is meant to take any unbiblical thinking or teaching that we may be thinking in ourselves or hearing from others and to expose that to the Word of God so that anything that would be dishonoring to God would be crushed and that we, as God's people, will be more prepared to love and worship Him and serve Him with all that we are and all that we have. Today I'm talking about something that I've heard many, many times. A position that says, well, you know, I just don't feel fed after worship service sometimes. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that whenever you say that, it is an unbiblical thing to say. And I'll explain why here shortly from a second perspective. In our first video, we discussed the reality that God is our first and most important teacher, is the one who feeds us by the power of the Spirit. And so if you don't feel fed, then you need to consider that you just said that the Holy Spirit of God did not accomplish what he intended to accomplish in your life during that worship service. But I want to look at another possibility of what could be going on that would cause you to feel this way. And I want to suggest that what is possible is that the issue is not with the preacher, and I'm going to get to that in a couple weeks, uh, a couple, maybe not weeks, but in the next couple videos. And it may not, it's clearly not with God. So it might be with you. The first reason it might be with you is this. You may not be mature. And what I want to do is I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 5. In Hebrews chapter 5, the writer is telling this audience that although there is much that needs to be said to them, it's hard to explain because those people, these, these people that it's going to be hard to explain to have become dull of hearing. There's something wrong with them. And then he says, for by this time, you ought to be teachers. So someone who's feeding others, you need someone to teach you again. You need someone to refeed you. And what? The basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. Is it possible that you are not understanding what God is teaching you because you're a child? Because you are unskilled? Because you, though should be mature by this time, have fallen backwards in a direction you should not have. But then listen, it says solid food is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. I cannot tell you how sorely lacking that is in the church today. People just do not understand God's word and there is truly a lack of discernment in God's church so often, so often. And the reality is, you may be there. You might be immature. You might be one of those people who needs to be retaught the basics again. And if you are, I don't want you to feel upset about that. I don't, I don't want you to feel like I'm, con I'm condemning you. Brothers and sisters, I was there. This was me. I had moments where I had been so faithful to God and then went back on all the progress I had made. And so if that's you, don't, don't feel beat up. Let's move forward. Let's, let's get on in our walk with God and seek after solid food, not after milk. Because the reality is your teacher, your preacher, should not be giving you milk. He should be giving you solid food. But what happens if you're immature? What happens if you don't understand it? Does that mean that the preacher starts preaching milk from the pulpit? 
does he start preaching the basics all over again and all over again? Because listen, there's always going to be, more often than not, immature believers or unbelievers who need to hear the basics. Does that mean all we ever do is that? No, of course not. And let me show you something that we see multiple times in the Gospels. But I just want to point out one because only it only really needs to be pointed out one time. Because the principle is true and it will always be true for a pastor who loves his sheep. If you are one of those people who need the milk, you, you know what? Yeah, you've got a hard time. You've been in sin. You, you just haven't been studying the, God, the, the Word of God. And maybe you need milk again. And the preacher keeps preaching solid food. You know what you should do? Go to the preacher and ask him, what did you mean? I don't understand these things. Can you help me? Jesus was the master teacher. He did not give milk. He gave solid food. He gave deep, lasting truth. And you know what? He gave that to everybody. Everyone who came in his path. He gave them the gospel. The most important truth and yet the hardest to receive. So, what happens when the very disciples of Jesus don't understand? They don't complain. They don't say, man, I just don't feel fed. I don't feel like I'm getting anything from the ministry of Jesus. They go and they ask him, what did you mean? Can you explain this to me? You know what Jesus did for his disciples? Because he loved them, and your pastor probably loves you too. He sat down with them. He took the time and he explained what he meant. And you know what? If you have a pastor who is truly called by God, he'll do the same thing. But I want to take this a step further. I want us to look at an attitude that we should take on. Not, not an attitude that needs to be crushed. Not an attitude that needs to be demolished. Which that whole mentality of, I don't feel fed. As if it was only the preacher's fault. I want to encourage you to take on a positive attitude. And what we see in Psalm 119 is that very attitude that we should take on. Where it says, blessed are you, O Lord. This is a person who understands the truth. That the most important thing they will ever get from worship, from their daily life, from their scripture reading or anything else, is to have a better understanding of God and to be more full of his joy and wisdom and so the psalmist says with a shout with a plea maybe begging on his knees teach me your statutes all and then he says in the way of your testimonies I delight he knows what's important to him it's not his way it's God's way he says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes and I will not forget your word. Brothers and sisters, this is the attitude we need to take on. An attitude that loves God's truth and comes to God in advance asking for that. Asking God, teach me. Open my eyes. Prepare my heart. We need to be a people who get on our knees and beg God. Show me. Show me your love. Show me the greatness of the gospel message. And you know what, brothers and sisters? If you will take on that attitude, if you will humble yourselves and come to God like this, broken and contrite, understanding that God's ways are always best, God will be faithful. He will teach you. He will show you. So the next time, before you ever even think about saying, I just wasn't fed today. Ask yourself, did I prepare? Am I mature? And if I didn't understand, would I at least first, before I ever complain, go to my pastor who loves me and ask for his help? If he is truly a man of God, he will help you. In our next video, we're going to discuss a second reason why you and you personally, as a believer in Christ, may not have felt fed. It has nothing to do with the Spirit of God failing. It has nothing to do with your preacher. It has to do with you. And so I encourage you to uh, tune into the next video whenever that will be. I'm hoping to get it within the next three or four days. 
And uh, that's all I have for you today. God bless and seek the truth of God. It will be your greatest joy.